Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world? I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio by the man, the myth, the legend. Grimhood. What's up, my brother? How are you, man? Hey, man. How are you doing? It's good to have you in here. So this is a long time coming. So you guys, uh, I'm not going to tell you Grimhood's real name, but uh, we'll keep that anonymous for now. But uh, a lot of you guys that follow me probably know him from Twitter. Um, you know, I would call him an alchemical master. I mean, he literally is uh, a specialist doing all sorts of stuff. He treats hyper NMDA, calcium states, nutritional deficiencies, including substance addictions, which as you know, from the last two years has massively gone up on the rise. Uh, he yeah. rebalances the microbiome uh, and he does also other glutaminergic mental and neurological disorders. Uh, again, he is, I would call him an alchemical master. And so we're going to be talking about all sorts of amazing healing modalities today on the show. Uh, but let me just ask you, bro, like um, it seems like, bro, we're on the verge of total collapse, right? Like everything right now in the third dimensional matrix or construct of time space is teetering on the brink, right? You've got the financial system, you've got, uh, you know, the managed or uh, created, you know, staged crises with inflation and fiat currency, cryptocurrency. I mean, so many people have been wiped out this year who are in crypto and coins and all these different things. Um, what is your take on what's happening? I mean, obviously I'm a glass half full guy, but I mean, I definitely see a lot of darkness. It seems like to come in this third dimension, uh, but I will say that ultimately the golden age comes from this. It's just a matter of when, but that's my opinion. What What are your thoughts on where we're going right now? So uh, I, I don't have a time frame for any of it, but I've sure. been talking to my uh, older brother about this a lot. He's um, he's he he used to be like a, a major banker in Los Angeles, nice. and then uh, the last economic crash, he ended up quitting and then getting involved in like spirituality, breath that's work. Awesome craniosacral therapy that's all awesome. uh, so like he he's evolved like uh, on a mental emotional spiritual level like infinitely since i, I met him but that's um awesome. we we've been talking about the lot uh talking about that a lot and uh i like i said i don't have a time frame for when yeah. it will occur but i i do believe that uh we're heading towards like a collapse and i it, i i do agree with the uh the golden age or utopia or whatever you want to call it evolving from that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I, I don't think you can make any kind of predictions right now from a timeline standpoint. It should have already happened, bro. I mean, we both know <laughs> that like, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're like, it's like life support of a zombie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, I mean, that's everything is zombified. The banks, the financial system, the mark, the economic markets, it's like, they just won't let it collapse. And burn and you know and, and you know this from an energy standpoint but you know from entropy comes creation and yes. we have to now have like the whole system bro is so fraudulent so full of chaos agents and you know anarchy agents and just bad you know individuals bad groups of people it's got to go away and 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 you know i would say you know your generation um you know is going to be the impetus for the change because it's going to be you guys you know and your generation that's going to build, you know, from, you know, the ground up. And, 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 you know, I would say, you know, I'm Gen X, obviously, you know, there, there are some people in my generation that, you know, can continue to, you know, build from the front or lead from the front, but it's yeah. the boomers are done, bro. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're <laughs> still all bought into the, you know, the medical system and, you know, getting the V and, you know, all that stuff, listening to their doctors, my doctor said, you know, they're, they're all still so bought into that, but at least, you know, the younger generations are not now granted, obviously there are a lot of people, as you know, in your generation, that are fucking mind controlled zombies too. Oh yeah. You know, oh, because yeah. of this, right. I mean, like, 
hey Siri, hey Alexa, hey Google. I mean, you know, you are I don't have to tell you. But <laughs> there are people like you, you know, and again, you guys are you are the outlier, but the cool thing is is that guys like you are really skilled and can do Thank a lot you. of things. And we're gonna talk about those things, you know, today. But you know, um, I, I definitely have hope, bro. I literally just did a podcast with a guy, uh, Clark Bartram, who's a very spiritually advanced person too, you know, similar to you and me, and he's 59. And he said, Hey man, whether it's this lifetime or the next, the golden age is coming. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. true. I mean, you, you could really look at that because we might blow ourselves up. It might happen. And as an energy being, you know, a soul consciousness spirit being will come back again, you know, whether we come back to earth or not, you know, can be debated. We might go somewhere else, but you know, I, I do think it will get built. It's just a matter of like, like you said, we can't predict timelines. It does seem like we are really close though, to whatever collapse is coming, you know, whether it's financial system or, you know, some sort of crazy world event. I hope it's not, you know, them like creating like a, a staged alien, you know, invasion, you know, type thing, which, you know, I wouldn't hold it against them. I mean, there's, you know, they always have shit up their sleeves. You know, they're always, they're always yeah. 20 to 30 years planning in front of like what we're thinking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was another thing that like really opened up my eyes in, uh, like it, it was right before like this whole charade occurred in 2020. My, <laughs> uh, my older brother took me to lunch and he started t telling me, I, I forget what, operation something that whole that laid out the entire plan for 2020 yep and uh i was yep. i was just like at first i didn't want to believe him yeah i know because <laughs> uh it, it like I, I just thought he was like going off the rails or something i was like wow this is really out here and then i started seeing it in china like uh towards the yeah. end of 2019 and then i was like oh, okay so this this is this is actually happening this is a real deal they're Bro, actually trying to yeah. take control of the probably the entire world and that's that's essentially what ended up happening and it's it, it honestly it, it just seemed like one big joke like a, a lot of i don't know how people fall for a lot of like what the media says like like uh there, there was one example that i retweeted on twitter the other day where they were like if you get this vaccine you get an order of free fries yeah and there's insane, also bro. this burger element to it and right <laughs> It, it's just like one huge big joke that everyone is just like going along with, but like people take it seriously and then they get upset with their family. Right. Like there's a whole bunch of separation and that's all intentional. That's all very, it's, yeah. Well, well, I want, let's go deeper on that. So before we get into the topics, um, so what's happening is a massive global MK ultra entrainment brainwashing. I mean, I mean, this yeah. is the CIA and the alphabet agencies, call them whatever you want. They have perfected this over time. And now due to, again, this, right, the hyper dimensionality of high resolution technologies, these beings or energies, you know, they call them, you know, what is it, uh, what's, what's his name from um, uh, back in early 19th century? I forget his name right now. You know, the guy, the, the great writer, but I mean, he called it Aramon fucking Steiger, what's his name? Uh, Rudolph, whatever his last name is. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the bottom line, I think it's Rudolph Steiger, but Steiger, but like, you know, he called it that in 1913, he predicted that they, they would release, that would literally steal the consciousness of the earth humans and replace it with like this technocratic, you know, organism, you know, call it transhumanism, right? Which uh -huh. we're yeah, we're seeing it everywhere. Yeah. Um, but but it would happen and it is happening and it's happening all around us. So all these people that are playing that game and are like so entrained in that are under the influence of very powerful mind control technologies that again, yeah. the Russians, the Germans, now, you know, the and now that, that those are the CIA or the or Mossad or you know, the, uh, what is the the British I forget what they're called, MI6. You know, all these high-level alphabet agencies are are now behind what is happening to the general population. And I'll tell you this right now, Grimhood, like I separate this, it's all based on vibration. Yeah. So if you like you said it already, if you're watching the news you know, surfing the internet, consuming Netflix or porn or video games or any of that stuff. Like your brain is literally in the frequency that they have entrained. Yep. So you are a slave to them telling you what to do. You are literally under mind control. This is a very, very subtle hypnotic form of mind control. But if you're not, and you're like you and you're healing people and you're creating like I am, 
you know, at the levels that we are, like it doesn't affect us. And that's why anyone who's familiar with the laws of energy, you know, really the law of resonance um, knows that dissonance and incoherence has no power over coherence and resonance and coherence and resonance actually transmutes those lower energy fields. So again, they, they can't do shit to us. And that's why you, when you look at that and retweet that you laugh because you're like, how can these people look at this and not laugh out loud? I've had actually other friends similar to you who come on the show and they're like, well, what if, what if the dark side calling the chaos agents, the parasitic energies are doing it in such an outspoken flamboyant way to get people to wake up that they're doing it like that, that they're like, you guys are so fucking stupid. Like, we're trying to tell you without telling you that this is all a charade yeah. and we need you motherfuckers to wake up so we can move into the higher dimensional reality. I mean, I'm serious. Th- th- you, there's logic in that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> that, that, that sounds actually very valid, but like go, going back to the MK ultra mind control, like uh, what they're doing is like invoking a primal sense of fear. And then that sends you all the way down to the bottom the bottom layers of that energy chart that you have. And it's, uh, it, it's very, very powerful mind control. Like it, it, there's, there's, it's just like textbook mind control. Like it, that, that level of fear that it's invoked playing on the death of yourselves, your family members. It's, uh, it's really sad, honestly. Like, I mean, I, it's, I, I, it's I, horrific, bro. It's yeah. Horrific. Like I, I, a lot of the, I'm still friends with them, but like we we don't like talk about politics or like any of the the charade stuff or anything. But uh, right. like it, it just is crazy to see how afraid they are. They're still wearing masks. They still want right. to get more boosters as they come out. It's it's insane. That's what it is, though. It's, I mean, they're, 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 that's the heat the heat the heat of it. So if we're, if there's a light in the sand, the resonant versus the dissonant, the dissonant are and you know this from you know your biological system understanding when you're in dissonance and fear. You are in an autonomic lock. It cannot change. You are like, you know, cortisol drip, fear consciousness. And it's just a spin cycle of like, you know, overproduction of cortisol. And again, you know, prolactin. I mean, all these things where you literally just are locked up. You are in a state of consciousness that cannot be exposed beyond fear. Yeah. And so you are now fear-based in everything that you do, everything that you watch, everything that you, you consume. It's all based on fear. And so, yeah, dude, that's why those people walk around with masks. I mean, it's mind blowing. I mean, literally, I just came from a mastermind in Utah with people, <laughs> all entrepreneur people, all like us. And everyone was saying that, oh, yeah, now it's like the real dividing line is when you're out in public and you see people that are wearing masks, you know, in the broad daylight, airports, wherever. And it's like, oh, they're brain dead. I mean, yeah. again, I, I don't want to judge people. Right. But let's just be honest. Like if you're so locked in fear of an invisible microorganism that doesn't exist, most likely, you know, scientifically provably now. um, And also, you know, that the mask does absolutely nothing but cause hypoxia and other uh, breathing disorder issues. Because, again, you're breathing recycled circulated air, you know pathogens, virulent agents. I mean, dirt. I mean, think about the mouth is the dirtiest place on the, you know, on our bodies. (laughs) Now you're suppressing it with a mask. So, I mean, like, I'm sorry if you watch my podcast and you're wearing a mask, you know, unsubscribe from me and leave because you (laughs) you failed the test of common sense at this point. You know, I get it if you wore it in 2020 when people didn't know what was really happening. But now, if you still are wearing a mask and you think that the mask can give you any kind of defense against the sea or whatever, then you're brain dead. And, you know, people will say to me, oh, but Jay, you wear the mask because you're co- you're concerned about other people. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're concerned about the elderly that are not as protected. Again, I'm sorry, you're brain dead. You know, unsubscribe. Don't watch my podcast. I, I know I'm going to offend a lot of people when I say this because I've never said this on a podcast before. But come on, at this point. There's reams of scientific data that show that yeah. the mask is you, it's literally worthless, bro. Yep. It, well, it, like it, even towards the end of 2020, there was like very various studies. And then 2021, there was meta analysis and like all the more official yep. randomized controlled trials. Yep. And uh, it's it's without it beyond a doubt, it's been confirmed that they are useless. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it's insane. And yet you see these people. All right. I want to get into your talking points. Um, All right. So our first talking point is is a whole podcast, but light environment, circadian biology. Dude, I, I want to give you a story. <clears throat> so I just talked to a guy yesterday, very high level um, private equity executive. I mean, he's the kind of guy that they bring into rescue companies that are torpedoed. And, you know, he has, he's got chronic, horrible depression. He was on therapeutic testosterone for a long time, but he was obviously quacked, you know, not given a pro proper protocol, but yeah. he traveled around the world uh, for five years straight. Like, you know, he'd be in Shanghai and then Moscow. Oh, and, man. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, people like that destroy their circadian rhythm. And now he's literally chronically depressed. I mean, I, I'm pretty confident, you know, that I got him on the right path now, but like, dude, light and sleep are so critical. And so many people don't understand that and don't maximize their sleep hygiene. It's insane, bro. Imagine how many people you know who sleep with their fucking phone charging on a nightstand next to them. Or like right under their head, under the door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've heard that several times. Dude, it's insane. It's insane. But yeah, I mean, light, I mean, it, it, it's, it, we don't think about it, but it's, it's so critical. And as you know, blue light, artificial light. I mean, even in my studio right now, I have an LED light behind me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we've replaced the awareness of our forefathers with technology and none of it is better. It's no, not enhancing no, it, Well, in, in my opinion, uh, like I, I've seen some videos and articles about like 6G coming out eventually. And uh, the more technology evolves beyond what it is now, which is already damaging, incredibly yeah. damaging. Like yeah. the blue light is uh, the LEDs and fluorescent specifically are very isolated in the blue wavelength spectrum yep. comparably to like green, red, infrared, like incandescence were a step above what we have now. Right. Like they, they may have been more energy intensive regarding the electricity factor, but uh, on a, the light factor, they were significantly better. Yep. And then um, totally. Yeah. I, I just, the, the more that technology evolves, I see greater de-evolution in, in humanity as well as uh, nature and animals, plants, right. like it, it impacts everything. It, yep. Any, anywhere near a major city, the animals are going to be, relatively sick depends how far they are the plants are going to be not the best like new york city for example oh. I, I visit brooklyn uh periodically there's like no nature whatsoever no, like th there, there's trees between like roads and everything but like you have to walk or take a train to the manhattan park or whatever yeah, Central and park or whatever yeah it's so bad there dude i mean all the major cities la is the same way i mean they've created yeah. these things the same way to remove the human, the human aspect of, you know, biological evolution. And, and as you said too, this, you know, the, the genus of, of nature. I mean, I mean, to me, nature is God, right? Yeah. You go out into the forest and you just lay down in a patch of field and you listen to, you know, again, the source field of energy. Of, to me, I always call it the energy of everything and nothing. It's like a buzz. It's like an yes. insect buzz, but that's the sound of creation. And yes. It's it's a profound sound, and yeah, you hear none of that in any of these cities. And bro, they're all toxic waste dumps. I mean, we're you know we're talking about blue light contamination, but think of the GMO and think of the EDCs, and you think of the plasticizers and you know the shit that they're spraying in the air. Yeah, you know, it's like it's it's beyond a mess at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, again, it, it really you would think that we would we would need the Earth needs to essentially flip or reset you know there, there needs to be like a reboot and maybe it happens in a way that the new earth is created from a higher dimensional reality of this current third dimension and the people who's who are consciously evolved you know ready to make the trek to the higher uh vibrational reality or you know uh how would i say etheric experience go there naturally i mean i i don't know you know obviously there's a lot of authors a lot of people have speculated who knows but yeah it seems like this current third dimensional existence is contaminated. You know, I, I, I was talking um, with this uh, with Clark again earlier today, and we were talking about grass fed beef. 
and wild caught fish. And how are they not contaminated? I mean, the acid rain's falling down on the grass fed beef. <laughs> you know, the wild caught fish are, you know, also dealing with the same contaminations from the shit they're spraying in the sky, fine marisol and barium and all this other stuff. So it's like, I mean, how is anything not that we eat, in, you know, in our um, water table or our ecosystem, how is it not contaminated, bro? Well, that, that, that's, that's what I've been saying for some time is um, we like uh, the, the phyto constituents in herbal medicines, they are technically plant toxins. Right. But we've evolved with them over so many thousands and thousands of years that we've if, uh, developed mechanisms to. It, it's pretty much uh, phytohormesis is yeah. what the word would be. We have mechanisms to defend against those plant toxins and then our body responds by upregulating upregulating like glutathione production, right, right. various detox factors, uh, other mechanisms involving like mitochondria, the brain, the central nervous system, biochemistry. It's very, it's a very fascinating field, but um, yeah, we have not evolved with all these chemicals for a long enough period for it to have any uh, chance of hormesis right. on our bodies. At, right. it, it'll probably take a couple if not more thousands of years before that even happens. So yep. what I've been saying for a long time is uh, proper preparations of foods. So that means for like vegetables, legumes, grains, soaking, sprouting, fermentation. That's uh, how like, if you look back at the Native American food practices, um, the, I believe it's called the three sisters, the right. beans, corn, and uh there was another fact, grain or something. I, it, it, my mind's blank on that one. It's all good. But uh, it, their preparation process was the soaking, the sprouting, and the fermentation to make those foods bioavailable, but to also right. help to eliminate a lot of those uh, the toxins that were present. So it was primarily like uh, heavy metals at the time. But um, in addition to that, the proper preparation of foods is uh, supporting your body via nutritional surplus and uh, these herbal medicines or peptides or nootropics that will help to support your body's detox capacity. So what I mean by the nutritional surplus is that all of these processes within the body, including the Krebs cycle, the mitochondrial function, uh, glutathione cycle, methylation cycle, they all require micronutrients. And when our body is under threat of all the stress and toxicity, blue light, EMF, all, so on and so forth, these nutrients are depleted because these yeah. processes are in overdrive and then you get burnt out once you run your run through your stores. So by maintaining a surplus of those micronutrients, you can better maintain a more optimized health paradigm in terms of uh, how your body functions and how it deals with all the toxicity because it, it really is unavoidable. Like organic, wild caught, it may have less toxicity, but it's... Uh, I, I, at, at this point in time, I don't think it's avoid, avoidable entirely. No. Like you, you yeah. would starve. You would starve if you were trying to avoid everything. It's great. And it, it also, you know, appeals to the, the dynamic nature of, you know, our species that we can avoid with all these toxins and, you know, negative, uh, you know, things in our ecosystem, in our environment and not, you know, be worse. Now, obviously it's, you already said it. I mean, you know, there's clear negative ramifications. I mean, Look at how weak men have become, you know, yeah. look at how emasculated women have become. I mean, you know, nobody talks about the women, you know, all becoming like masculine and like, you know, not feminine. I mean, I mean, it, dude, it's, it's, it's decimated the species, you know, the, the biome from a standpoint of like, people are like now opposite. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. There's natural laws to our reality right. and it's like right. the inverse of uh, essentially everything in the mainstream is just the inverse of what 
these natural laws should be right. um, in place for. So it's it's just confusing people. It's making them more sick, either mentally, spiritually, so on and so forth. And it it just it just takes people further away from the creator, like energy or whatever you want to call it. Right. It's a full spectrum assault on all those things you just said: spirituality, physicality, mentality. And then I would say, uh, you know, mindset, heart-based awareness. It, it, yeah. you know, it's, it, it really is. It's a true inversion. And, you know, this has been the great enslavement tool because, you know, again, a wide percentage of people, it's not just young people anymore. It's everyone. This is where they get their information. Yep. And yep. The, it, it, nobody is fact-checking the fact-checkers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you think about it, it's all bullshit. You know, Wikipedia is erased on a daily basis now. I mean, I mean, everything is state sponsored or state supported. I mean, how do you believe, you know, again, a guy this morning on the podcast was like, he's like, dude, how do you believe in any of the data from anything? Everything is lie. Yeah. yeah. Financial numbers from corporations are, 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 are trick fucked. You know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, everything is like, you know, uh, you know, the word is a, a, a prevarication, you know, uh, it's just a lie. I, I, I don't really, I feel so bad for younger people because how are they supposed to determine what is true and what isn't at this point? I mean, cause you know, truth comes learning truth or becoming aware of truth comes from discernment and doing the work, you know, sitting in stillness, meditation, contra- contemplation, introspection, doing all those things. And anyone yeah. can do that, but you know, by and large, you know, younger people, like I said, have grown up with this you know, given to them at an early age and like anybody doesn't matter, you know, and I was obviously blessed to not grow up in this. I didn't have any screen until I was out of college already. I mean, I never even had a freaking do my senior year of college. That's how old I am at 51. And they, they invented the word processor, <laughs> you know, the green screen word processor. My mom still has my brother word processor that I got as a senior in college. I wrote a couple papers on it. I said, Hey, boot it up, you know, plug it in, boot it up to see if my papers are still on there. She's like, they're still there. Still work. Hey. That's pretty cool. That's pretty it cool. is cool. I mean, it is cool, but it's like you contrast that with, you know, the fifth grader of today and the amount of actual work that they have to do to create a writing, you know, to write a paper, you know, to do a book report, you know, anything, you know, versus what I had to do is so vastly different. Yeah. That. Yeah, and, and and you know this too, and this is not a, 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 a slam at younger folks. Everybody is always going to choose the least friction in the path. Yep. So like, you know, if I was growing up now, I would do the same thing. But again, back then we didn't have other options. Like if you were going to do a book report on something that your, your teacher or whatever gave you, you know, you had to go to the library, you had to pull out the card catalog, you had to use the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> and then after all that shit, bro, you got to now go to the back of the library and find it. <laughs> I mean, that was an hour. At right? least, and yeah. Now, and now kids got a book report. I mean, I have a professor who's a friend of mine. And when he told me this like two years ago, I was like mind blown. But like, dude, most of their job now is preventing and spotting plagiarism. Because everything that, that is sense. downloaded has already been written or, you know, pushed out into the, into the world, nothing new under the sun. Right. So it's like, how crazy is that to think that just 30 years ago, people were doing their own work, researching and then writing. Yeah. And you could, you know, technically, if you really wanted to like write out what you read in a book on a piece of paper, word for word, you could plagiarize, but that, but now it's as simple as cutting and pasting. Yeah. And then like, um, (laughs) I'll admit, I, I I was guilty of that when I was uh, in school sometimes. But why would you not, dude? Who well, would yeah, you that, Like, a lot of the work in public school was just not mentally stimulating for me. No, all, but, um, no. Uh-uh. Like, I, I would just switch around some of the words and I'd get an A on it. <laughs> I mean, of course. I mean, of course. And that's the whole point. But then when you really look at that from a population dynamic standpoint, people's IQ goes down because nobody's learning anything. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. You're not reading it. You're not understanding it. I mean, I'm telling you, dude, you know, you know, uh, you know, Nick Andrews, you know, from the groups and stuff like, you know, one of his jobs in the last like five or six years is to go out to job sites and to 
unfuck the engineers work that they should have learned while they were in college or, or post-grad that they didn't learn because they're like creating systems. They're so, as he would say, hi- highly unstable that they could blow up the entire building. <laughs> oh my God. That's but again, dude, this is where we it. have gone to as a society, as we have dumbed out, people don't yeah. have to learn because technology has been the easy button. Technology makes people not have to er- to learn. I mean, and, and, and ultimately, you know, to critically think and to discern. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, what's that's a major lost. factor. Yeah. Yeah. The, the discernment was, uh, I, I, f- I feel like I've had it since um, I started to develop it, like after severe trauma in my teenage years, like uh, a sense of discernment. And well, like it, it, it would, <laughs> let me think of how to put this. So yeah. it, it was very confusing since I had uh, developed paranoid schizophrenia or like triggered the genetics for it. But um, through those episodes of psychosis, that really helped me to uh, like discern reality from what, like uh, collective reality from what I, uh, what else I was seeing and believing, hearing, smelling, tasting, so on and so forth. So, um, I believe that played a role and then just seeing the reality of what the world is. My older brother and my grandmother had been teaching me about, uh, like spirituality, religions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I didn't understand it at the time, but like economics, how the world works in general. Yeah. Uh, Since, since I was very young, but, um, yeah, I, a lot of people just don't have that. Like their parents are at work all the time. Right. Uh, yeah. They come home, they're exhausted. They're being raised by like the, the computer or whatever. It's the uh, iPad. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it, it like, it just, it just, it's the same brainwashing. Like it, there, there's no sense of uh, discernment like you had mentioned. Yeah. I mean, I think it's been going on forever, bro. I, I, I yeah. think, you know, to not separate anybody or any, you know, group or class or anything like that. I mean, it's just become more, overt now like they don't give a shit you know i guess like i say you know like with you know I, and you know i can go full-blown uh tin foil but like, <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it all it it it, you know, it it seemingly at times almost is like they are preparing us for invasion it, it, you know they've dumbed down the population to a point and obviously as you know now so many people will be destroyed uh you know through autoimmune disruption and dysregulation and all these other things yeah. from you know what so they've, and and then of course with the whole, you know, uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals and phytoestrogens and all this, they've completely weakened the bone mineral density of you know younger people. I mean, it's a disaster. I mean, I mean again, it's, it's like I say, it's a multi-spectrum full assault on every part of who we are as a species. It's almost like, dude, literally, you can make a serious, you know, you know, ingest argument that they are going to come down and colonize us. And they're just going to just like, you know, blow a whistle <laughs> and all the men are just going to be like, okay, march into the ship. <laughs> you know, and the women, I mean, I'm serious. Like, bro. I mean, like there isn't, we're, we're such a defeated group. I mean, you probably have seen this. I'm sure you have, but like, you know, with TikTok, um, and I didn't know this, bro. Like and I should have known this, but I didn't, I found this out about a year ago, but TikTok in China only shows, science mathematics social studies and historical content there's no oh, wow. bullshit memes there's nothing like tiktok in the usa so i mean like when you understand that you realize that that's how china invaded infiltrated and conquered the west that you know yeah. they, all their kids yeah. are intelligent and learning through tiktok and all of us or meaning not us but our kids and you know the younger generation who have been on tiktok for 10 years have been enslaved and uh, enslaved and entrained by memes and celebrity culture and YouTube superstars and all that bullshit. I mean, bro, it's a, it's a fact now that if you ask a young person, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? They say, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber <laughs> with 5 million people subscribed or some shit like that. I mean, my daughter yeah. is 12 and she says the same shit all the time, you know? And so that's, that's where we are, but it's, 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 I mean, it really is devastating. I mean, when you really think about the implications of that, so, I mean, I don't know where it's going to go. You know, these are very strange times. The The best part, though, is that there are people like you. There are people like me. There are lots of people out there 
that are positioning resonant information and talking about things that can help people if they, like you said, take a, you know, an inclination to learning. It's just, it's almost like, you know, and I'm interested in your opinion on this. It's almost like, cause again, whenever I get around people like you and, you know, we're having masterminds or we're in like, you know, places we're in the wilderness or we're off the grid. Everybody says, well, you know what? It seems like we're going to be building communities. You know, there's going to be this technocratic main tr- main matrix mainstream, you know, that that's evolves into where everybody's fucking plugged into the metaverse or whatever they call it. And then people like us are going to be living in freaking communes, bro. Yeah. Well, doing- that, that's I, I've been considering that for probably since I was like 16. Very, yeah. very long time. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to talk to my other online friends about it. Um, like uh, the, the media tries to fight against it. And then like people will had latch on to that and they'll be like, communes don't work. You need government. How are you going to repair the roads? How are you going to repair, repair all the plumbing, right, right, the electricity? Right. The government is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, we, uh, early humans didn't have government. No. It, 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 like before monarchy, um, it was primarily anarchy. Like people hear anarchy and they're like, uh, ah burning everything blah 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 right. black lives matter, matter. yeah it, it's it's like uh like actually working together as a community is like the the true meaning of anarchy right like without anyone governing anyone else that's right um so like it, I, I definitely believe the commune factor is very very possible it's just a matter of uh getting the the same like-minded people people that have useful skills that can maintain like uh a community or small city or whatever eventually ends up getting built. But I, I do believe that there's going to be like a separation between like pe- people are more and more people are starting to catch on about how harmful like living in major cities is yeah, like sure. all the factors that we mentioned. And uh, I, I've, I've been hearing a lot more people expressing that they want to get out of major cities and move to the rural areas, like the countryside. Yeah, bro, you yeah. have to. I mean, I left LA two two years ago. Yeah. It's actually now longer than that. But I'm still not rural enough. I'm rural. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm at 1,800 feet. But I mean, you know, I said, when the people ask me, like, where's Marietta? I'm like, oh, it's wine country. And then they still look at me. I said, it's outside of the blast radius of LA and San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That, that's, that's a good answer. And then that, that tweaks their interest more. But like, I'm honestly, like, I won't say it right now on the podcast. I'll tell you off air. But I mean, we're, we finally, we're out. It's getting better and deeper yeah. for us. So, but a yeah. lot of people are. And, um, you know, to what you said, that bro, that's the future. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, there, there's no other way you can point it to me unless there is some sort of divine intervention and there really is a cosmic, you know, energetic shift. And you know, the people in residence just move to a higher state. And you know, maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. I, I won't give, give any of it, you know, any credit. Just say, I'll say that it's all anything is possible at this point. But yeah, I do think that we'll be communes. I think that people like us will be living together again attracting, you know, the, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. You'll be getting high vibration people living with high vibration people. And you're right, you know, useful skills and the useful idiots will be in the metaverse. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, that, it seems like that's where it's going, but I do want to talk about some more of your points because I'm interested in your ideas. You know, you have one of your, a couple of your points are diet, nutrition, and then of course, exercise. You know, I'm interested. I mean, you're, and again, this is not, I mean, you're a genius in in, in an unbelievable level, but again, you're what, 25? How old are you? 24? I'm 26. (laughs) 26. I knew you were really young. I remember reading it on um, Twitter and I was like, Jesus. But like, you know, I'm interested in your take on, you know, diet, nutrition, and of course, exercise. I mean, I know you're big into, you know, building, um, you know, skeletal muscle mass and stuff for all the reasons that you and I both know. But like, from a diet and nutrition standpoint, like, what is your, you know, your philosophy or your take on it? So, um, Essentially, as as long as you're eating like uh, primarily nutrient dense whole foods, then that's like I, I used to be really into the carnivore ketogenic community. Sure. Sure. Uh, I, I've toned back on that. Like they they have their applications uh, for sure. depending on different contexts. Like for sure, the carnivore diet's really excellent for like gut related issues, yeah, autoimmune true. related issues, skin yep. related issues. Yep. Ketogenic is good for essentially anything neurological, psychiatric, right. neurodegenerative. 
but um for the for the average person uh as long as you're eating the nutrient dense whole foods i put together like a uh zero tolerance dietary framework that includes the inflammatory food groups that all of these various diets have in common that they eliminate so that includes refined sugar yep. uh industrialized or refined uh vegetable and seed oils corn soy uh gluten for the most part like some diets will still include gluten um artificial sweeteners low quality animals if you can afford to like uh, if you can only afford grocery store meats that's better than eating no meats at all but um smoke and alcohol so th those are a lot of the main factors that when people change their diet or try start to try to improve their health those are the things that get eliminated but uh, aside from like yeah yeah th those are the things that typically get eliminated though that's a main commonalities between all diets. So like some people will see improvements with the vegan diet, the vegetarian diet, keto, carnivore, but the primary reason is that they're, they're no longer consuming those uh, high calorie nutrient dense foods. So they, in addition to reducing their caloric intake, just by virtue of eating, uh, satiating whole foods is they're actually beginning to nourish themselves with the micronutrients that cause uh, all these processes within the body to run. So it's, with obesity, it's not just being overweight. Like people will continue pounding down calories all day long, but they're just these nutritionally dead calories. So they never feel satiated on a real yeah. level. And yeah. then once they change their diet to a nutrient dense whole food diet, they're like, wow, I actually feel satiated for the first time. So, um, what the other main factor aside from just reducing caloric intake is the micronutrients. So uh, the B vitamins, the minerals, the electrolytes, they all help to run uh, carbohydrate metabolism, mm -hmm. fat metabolism, and uh, amino acid or protein metabolism. So without those, the glucose, the fats, the amino acids are not being metabolized properly. They get stored right. within the body as yep. fat. Yep. And uh, that creates the whole cycle of obesity, eventually diabetes, so yep. on. Inflammation. So yeah. Um, yeah. And then light also plays a major role. So, light, specifically red and infrared light from the sun, which is present primarily during sunrise and sunset. That's yep. why I always stress those two times for sun yep. exposure, yep. is. Uh, the red and infrared light, it interacts within the water within our cells and it helps to, just to put it simply for your viewers, it helps to produce uh, cellular energy or ATP within the cells. Right. So right. it light is what governs essentially all of the processes within the body. The micronutrients just help it run properly. I mean, bro, we are light. At yes. Essence. Yes. Absolutely. We are base essence at light at base essence. I mean, you said a lot of great things. I agree with all of it. Um, I, you know, I'll add a couple of points. Uh, too many people now have a phobia of carbohydrates. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and as you know, you know, carbs are the enemy. It makes people fat. You know, it causes insulin spikes. I mean, on and on it goes. But you know, the guy that I spoke to this morning, for my first uh, podcast is a uh, a pretty famous. Um, peptides and stem cell guy and he was like look man arth arthritis now is making a raging return and comeback not because of the autoimmune things from people that are you know what it but because of the people that are all carnivore and all keto hardcore all the time and they're getting no fluid or fluidity in their joints and tendon capsules because they have no synovial fluid when you never ever eat carbohydrates yeah you know? yeah so he's like, it's a huge thing amongst our species right now, especially in the West. There's so many people have lost weight, you know, again, from a ketogenic carnivore, you know, let's just call it, you know, I like to call it insulin controlled, um, but they're, they're carb phobic. And, yeah. as you, you know, as you know, anyone who's successful with a ketogenic or carniv carnivore type diet, and back in my time it was the Atkins diet was the ketogenic diet, you know, is, you know, utilizing, utilizing uh, regular refeeds, you know, essentially reglycogenation, you know, so you have like, you know, you go five or six days, hardcore, 
And then you're like, okay, I, I my body needs carbs now. And as you know, the brain runs off of glucose. Yes, it can build it from protein or fat too through gluconeogenesis. But at the end of the day, the human body does require carbohydrates, you know, you know, to survive. And 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 I would say thrive. You know, that's a better word. But it's crazy how many people refuse to eat carbs now, and then suffer horrifically. And and you know, I'll say this too. Um, you know, I, when I, in my twenties, like your age, it, it literally exactly the same as your age, which is crazy. It was like when I was 26, I was working with the crazy Lyle McDonald to write the book, uh, you know, the ketogenic diet of theory and practice. And so I was in ketosis. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was in the, I was in ketosis for three years. Yeah. Same, and I was doing cyclical ketogenic. Yeah. I was doing CKD, TKD, all these different, you know, offshoots and bro, I retarded my insulin metabolism. I remember when I came off. And I, for six months, I was a zombie. I couldn't yeah. eat any carbs. Yeah. So, so I mean, I'm, again, I'm not against any of these diets. Like you said, everything is about balance, you know, um, you know, essentially being, um, you know, metabolically efficient, you know, fuel your body, you know, based on its unique energetic demand. That's cool. But like, don't turn your back on carbohydrates forever. Otherwise you will definitely have issues. And of course, like, you know, again, the arthritis thing, that is like so big now because again, nobody has any in, uh, synovial fluid in their joint capsules because they're never eating carbs. Yeah. Oh, I, I, another thing with that is uh, I, I've been noticing more and more people on the carnivore diet. The gut microbiome completely shifts away yep. from uh, what it is with like a more balanced omnivorous diet. Right. So like it starves a lot of the bacteria fed by soluble and insoluble fibers. Yep. The, uh, fructo oligosaccharides so on and so forth with all of these fruits and the vegetables but um aside from that the the let me think of how to put that so the short chain fatty acids produced by these fibers help to produce the mucin uh yeah mucin yep. or mucus within the gut lining yeah. so that helps to protect the gut lining it helps to feed other bacteria it's incredibly anti-inflammatory for the gut. People are doing the carnivore diet. And then in my opinion, they're doing it completely wrong. They're just eating straight beef. Totally. Uh, totally. High iron, straight beef. Totally. Multiple pounds per day. And they're just loading their bodies with this iron. And then harmful gut bacteria feed on iron, primarily right. parasites, right. viruses. Right. Like yeah. it's a uh, like I, I have hereditary hemochromatosis, so I was already very susceptible to that. Uh, I didn't realize I had it until I ended up crashing my gut microbiome with the carnivore diet. Wow. I was like, something is not right here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it took me a while to be like, I had to gradually reintroduce the carbohydrates, the vegetables, so on and yeah. so forth. But um, I noticed the same thing that you mentioned was the uh, paradoxical insulin, insulin resistance. Oh, yeah. Like. I would crash after having any carbs. I'd, my body would be asleep. very inflamed, just brain fog. Horrible. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. Well, the the main thing that I believe is most healthiest that I've – like it ties back into the light and circadian rhythm is uh, seasonal eating. Like, yeah. our, like the carnivore people will be like our ancestors were carnivore. They only ate meat. Vegan people will be like they only ate vegetables. But uh, we, we ate with the seasons. Like we weren't just going to starve like for months on end if there was no food available. So, uh, yeah, like it, it, essentially we have like the, the mouth structure of scavengers. So we yeah. would just eat essentially anything we could get our hands on as long as we were still eating. Like right. we were nourishing our brains with healthy fats, the bone marrow, organs, eggs, meats, but we were also eating that, – that's what hunters and uh, scavenger – hunters and gatherers – Right. That's like it's not gatherers or just hunters. It's hunters and gatherers that that saying uh, based on like historical evolution or like the study of it. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, literally. Awesome, man. Well, the last couple of points we're going to hit on before we end the show is, um, you know, you talked about relationships and socializations, love. I mean, obviously, love is such a huge thing. It's a podcast in and of itself. And then you did want to talk a little about shadow work. You know, I'll just set you up. Um, I personally believe that, you know, the majority of the world's problems are from trauma that has been in, unintegrated, right? I mean, yeah. you know, just discovering what is the trauma. I mean, I always tell people like, you know, there's no avoiding it. You come out of your, come out of the womb 
and you've been in the, you know, my good friend, Dr. Udu Erasmus, you know, calls it the Buddha sack, you know, in the amniotic fluid. And, you know, now you come into the world and you're like, what the hell? I got to breathe. And, you know, you got you to deal with you know, being a physical being in a meat suit. Yeah. And so there's trauma. And, 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 you know, everybody has various levels and degrees of it. And, you know, the people that are most, and again, for me, successful is living in a high vibration, right? Like yeah. giving and receiving love, choosing to respond out of love versus react out of fear. Who gives a shit about how much money you make or? you know, whether or not you have a six pack and a hot wife, you know, it's, are you, living, <laughs> are you living in, in resonance and are you responding out of love versus reacting out of fear? And are you giving and receiving love to everybody that you come across? Right. So it's like, that's what's most important. And the people that are able to do that, bro, is, you know, are, are the ones that are constantly integrating their trauma as they evolve as a being. And, you know, a lot of people have no idea what you and I are even talking about right now, but <laughs> Trauma is, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's the key. It's the critical crux of being a physical body, you know, spiritual being in a physical, being housed in an avatar physical body, because without the integration of trauma, you stagnate. And yes. if, if we really are here again, as souls, you know, call us spiritual beings, call us, you know, discharges of plasmatic fire then it's because we're evolving and growing and evolving and growing comes from the contrast. It comes from difficulty. It comes from experiences that you have to maneuver and navigate through. It doesn't come from like easy life, you know? So it's like, you know, if people would just stop being so hard on themselves when they have setbacks, you know, again, people define a lot, a lot of their occurrences as like debacles or failures or, you know, it's like, no, man, if you're looking at this from a soul level, you know, every experience is a benefit. You know, if your perception is like, wow, that was a very difficult thing for me to, you know, evolve and grow through in my life, but it helped me become the person that I am, you know, then you're looking at things from a non-linear, you know, judgmental condemning way. You're basically yeah. saying, Hey, everything that I experience is a gift. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with everything you said. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, so one of my, uh, one of my old good friends with Ehlers Downlow syndrome, like the pain that he was going through, like was barely managed by multiple opioids, benzodiazepines, sure. uh, nerve agent relief, uh, nerve relief agents. And uh, like things like ketamine, like he would be very experimental with his pain relief, but one of the things that he said that really stuck with me is most people have not suffered enough. Right. Um, th that's what keeps them in that stagnancy is uh, uh, th th there's, there's absolutely trauma just from, from birth, but like th there's levels to trauma and uh, people that are very driven or motivated to like make major change within their lives have come to a point where they have, it, it's very individual. They, they've suffered enough in their own individual context and they just want to change it. They want to change their mindset, uh, the way that they view reality as a whole, uh, the way that they view others themselves. So yeah, it, it's, there, there's, it's, there's some complexity there. Um, in my experience, I, I was very stagnant going through a lot of the trauma because I, uh, like the, the the people that like the family that I was surrounded with was very negative. They were in uh, very rough situations for their own lives individually, sure. and uh, that reflected on me. That reflected yeah. on me. Like I, I wasn't surrounded by many positive people. My grandmother and older brother were a state away, so I didn't see them very often, especially during that period. Um, yeah. So like, I do believe the trauma played some role in like the paranoid schizophrenia, the drug addiction that I eventually experienced. Um, and then just everything else I've experienced through life. And then it got to a point where I had my first seizure, the traumatic brain injury after the first seizure. And I was like, I can't live like the way that I was anymore. I have to figure something out. I had suffered enough at that point to, uh, 
actually make change within my life, to break out of that stagnancy, to dive deep into the pain. And uh, like, there's no other way to go. You, you can't go around it. You can't go over it. You have to go straight through that pain, experience yeah. it again in a more emotionally stable state. Like you, you don't want to keep like with PTSD, for example, you don't want to have those flashbacks and then get thrown into an episode, panic attack, whatever. Um, you want to find a, a, a state of emotional stability and then gradually work through all of that trauma. So that way you can integrate it, breathe through it and release that energy that is stored within the body. Cause that negative energy will uh, eventually result in disease. Yeah. Uh, not, exactly not just like, like physical or, or not just psychiatric or emotional disease, but also physical, like, um, yeah, hundred percent, dude. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. 100%. I mean, forgiveness. I mean, I mean, you're like I said, man, you're you're way beyond the level of awareness of most people your age. I mean, again, you're a very ancient soul. Have you ever had your DNA done, by the way? I, I, I've had the uh, genetic test that I've analyzed with like MTHFR support, Prometheus. But what, what do you mean exactly? Well, I would be you? interested to know how much Neanderthal DNA you have because I find, and this is just my pet theory, the smartest people who are also the most resistant to the matrix programming are high level of DNA. So my pet theory, and I'll just share it on the podcast. I don't give a shit. My pet theory <laughs> is that, you know, whoever the dark side is, the Anunnaki, the reptilians, whatever you want to call them, fallen angels. Like when they were hybridizing us, the Neanderthals were the ones that were like, Oh shit, we got to get rid of these motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> they're too smart. They are not compliant. They have, the ability to evolve into what we are, you know, from a res the highest level of resonance, you know, again, we, you know, gods, gods, right. When we can evolve to, you know, to our light body and they wanted to get rid of us and that, you know, so then the more compliant humans are the sapiens. And again, if you do a 23 me and ancestry test, uh, you can find out your level of Neanderthal. Now, again, this is a pet theory. And, you know, before people come after me, I've done a lot of research on this. I've done a lot of deep thinking and even meditation on it, but you know, we definitely know that there has been a lot of different species here. You know, there was Cro-Magnon, there was Denisovian, there was yeah. Neanderthal, and then there was Sapiens. And yeah, I exactly. think, and well, oh, I mean, look, bro, you have a very Neanderthal, like me, you have a very Neanderthal facial structure. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that. I like, ne but Neanderthals I were so strong, bro. And they had giant forebrains. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm telling you, like the Neanderthal was, and remember, this is all covered up too, by the way. There's no information about this. They usually say that Neanderthals didn't make it. Sapiens killed them. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think <laughs> I think I saw a recent study that um I don't I don't remember where I saw I don't know if it was just like an article or an actual study that uh yeah. I, I'll have to see if I can find it or if it's yeah. if it's been erased at this point. But um I, I if if I recall correctly, uh, don't quote me on this, but yeah, I, I believe the paper said uh, like Neanderthals were the root of uh, human evolution. Right. But right. um. Right. Right. I, I believe I'm butchering it a little bit, but no, I, but I think it, that I was mean, like I the mean, gist look, of dude, the paper. If you look, if you go deeper and you look and start looking at like certain cultures and civilizations of people, like the Basques. The Basques were the living, I would say, evolution of the DNA of, of the Neanderthal race. They're like really thick boned, super intelligent, super resistant. Like they're the ones that have like insane uh, cholesterol levels and live, oh, the long, yeah, yeah. live the longest, live the strongest. You know, this, this is Sardinia, you know, is where the Basque, but they're also all RH negative bloodline i mean there's a lot of like you know esoteric things about the basques but i mean i'm telling you man I, I this is just my pet theory but i really do think that the neanderthals were the group that they could not make us slaves 
Yeah. They, and they got rid of us fast. And and, and by the yeah. way, I'm, I say that because like in my 23 and me, we're like almost 6% in the Anathol, which is unheard of. <laughs> I mean, most people are like 2.7 to 3.6. You know, yeah. if you're in the four, you're high. And we were literally like 5.97 or some shit like that, you know. And I was like, that makes sense. You know, I remember my brother joking about it. I'm like, well, what do you think that really means? And he was like, well, it means if you get hit by our bones, it'll crush your fucking skull. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, I'm telling you, I mean, you know this from just observation. And I know you're only 26, but you're a very ancient soul. Like you just see people who are literally like you were saying at the beginning of the show, you know, they just fall for everything. It's like, they've been engineered to be that way. That would be like, I, I, I see a lot of theories about like a uh, NPC and like how people can break out of it. But for the majority of what I've noticed, at least so far, like, like you said, I'm still young. Uh, Many people don't break out of that mindset. No, bro. They, they never do. Uh, no. No. Maybe in their next lifetime. But, but what if? But what if? It, what if? The, you know, when we because this is interesting, and I've never talked about this before. But what if what we call NPCs, you know, backfillers, whatever you want to call them. I think Dolores Cannon called them backfill people. <laughs> <laughs> what if they really are the Agigi that the Anunnaki created as just literally engineered slaves without souls. Now I'm not saying that every NPC or, or backfiller is without a soul, but if they really have been, let's say had their DNA, because we know that's what it is, right? You had your DNA, DNA turned off right, right from, to, from 12 strand to two strand. Yeah. And people like Neanderthals, let's say are now work, working on three or four strand or turned on or fired on or whatever you want to call it. Just call it latent DNA is fired on. You are right in that eventually every being who activates all 12 strands of the DNA is a, a light being, you know, you, or essentially is, con is connecting now to the higher self and the higher self can create the light body. And now you can travel through portals or, you know, interdimensional wormholes, whatever you want to call it. Maybe you can even literally just move your body, your spirit energetically to higher states of awareness or energetic expressions anyway. I mean, who knows? It's all debatable, but yeah, um, it is possible that there's just different essentially call it species or, you know, uh, levels of humanoid, you know, let's just say, let's just say bipedal humanoids that have been engineered in specific ways. And we're, it's a, bro, it's a fucking DNA farm. You know, it's like, <laughs> what, what was his name? Uh, the guy that wrote the book, God damn it. Um, yeah, we're both having brain farts on this today. Uh, <laughs> I, I forget the guy's name, but he wrote the book. Um, he was the one that said the earth is a farm and I don't know. God, I can't think of his name right now. It's crazy. I always say his name right away, but uh, the earth is a farm and we're someone else's property. And he was saying this in 1885 in his first couple of books. I, I can't, I'm, my mind, it's amazing. Wow. I always say his name, but, uh, but he saw this from his studies and he was a brilliant guy, but he was basically saying that there were different levels of human beings here and some were compliant and some were like, you know, you try to tell me to take a V I'll kill you. Right. Yeah. So it's like, but there are so many different levels and it, and, it, and it would make sense if some of us were literally created to comply. Yeah. It, it, there has to be, that, that sounds like a valid explanation. Like I, I've been trying to think of a, an explanation for why I, I like, I just, I can't put myself into those people's shoes right. and try to imagine like, ever falling for anything that's going on. Like it, it just right. it's outside of my comprehension. So that right. that explanation would uh that's Occam's razor. It, it would work, fill right. in some fill in some gaps. That's that's Occam's razor at work. The the simplest solution is the logical answer. I mean, because you're right. You can't, you know, and I'm like you, bro. I've thought about this deeply. You know, what is an NPC? What makes an NPC? You know, you think of like, oh well, they've been detrained or you know they're under MK Ultra mind control programming or you know, somebody actually did, you know, split their consciousness, right? Because we know they did those experiments on people too. But yeah, what if they are just a subspecies of you know, upright walking hominid humans that have been entrained from the technology of turning off or detuning their uh, avatar uh, chromosome levels? And now they're just susceptible to the entrainment. I mean, look, Billy Carson, who's a good friend of mine, you know, he wrote, he just did the Black Knight satellite documentary. And 
all the alphabet agencies on this planet know that there is a signal coming from the Black Knight satellite uh, that people theorize could be what is keeping the people that are susceptible to the mind control programming dumbed down. I haven't heard of that one yet. Yeah, dude, I mean, it's like a hip, it's a hip, it's like a a hypnotic, you know, vibratory frequency that can be picked up by certain technologies on the planet. And Billy's, uh, Billy's pod, if you, if you're, if you have a membership to forbidden, you know, dot TV, forbidden knowledge dot TV, you know, him and I have a television show on there, but if you have a subscription to that, he's done a documentary on that. And I went to the, the, the red carpet premiere back in June when it opened and it's a phenomenal documentary. I mean, he's got all yeah, the ancient oh, alien sure, people. Yeah. yeah. It's insane, but he's got all the ancient alien people, the ones that are not, you know, on the corrupted, uh, interviewed about it. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's been around forever. All the governments acknowledge that it's up there, but they don't tell you what it's there for. It's clearly non-terrestrial. It's clearly not, you know, of human creation. It's been there for a long time. I mean, maybe that's what they left. Maybe that, you know, when they up and left, when they up and left, bro, they left that device there to basically keep their slave species, slave species of the gods, entrained. I I, got to check that out. Like, I I feel, uh, follow Billy on uh, Twitter, but um, we we haven't really interacted too I should connect you with Billy. He's great. He's in the group. He's in our group. So he's in there. Yeah, he's in there. He just never comments. I mean, he's a busy dude. But, I mean, uh, it's probably on YouTube now. You could probably buy it for $3.99 or $4.99, but it's worth it, dude. It's amazing. It's, I mean, he he spent four years um, interviewing and researching on this. And it's, it, it doesn't jump the shark at the end, but they get really wild in their postulation. But uh, I mean, dude, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's there and it's been there. And, you know, at, at the end of the show, you know, the other guy, he's, I can't remember. It's an ancient alien guy, but the, re- the researcher and him are saying, Hey, why have the governments of the world not shot it down? And there's a reason for that. Like, yeah. Why would you want to shoot something down that's clearly of a technology that we can't even comprehend? Because maybe if you do that, you just set up doomsday for Earth. <laughs> Everything blows up. Or not even that. They just it sends a freaking uh, invading horde of conquering, you know, gods back. The ants are you know, okay. the ants blew up the entrainment tech. We gotta go in and see what happened. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's a, it's an epic documentary though. I mean, I, I didn't expect it. I mean, obviously I was, I'm his friend and I su- wanted to support him. My wife and I went there to support, but it blew my mind, dude. It blew my mind. I mean, I mean, to think that if that's really what it is and that's why some of us are totally immune because bro, you're right. I mean, you and I would easily give up our life if you tried to do that to us. Yeah. And the rest of these people are like, what do you mean? Like doctor said, it's great. It keeps you safe. <laughs> the the animal studies are uh, a little concerning too. I, well, I don't think I mean, most I mean, well, right. I mean, Nick always says that you know the mRNA animal studies. There's no third and fourth order effects, and people are like, what does that mean? It means that all the animals died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, again, it is a spirituality test, and it's an IQ test. Sorry to say, but I mean, at this point, we already talked about the wearing the mask. It's the same thing. But I mean, I'm sorry, but like you either are of a vibration where you say no. Right. And if I if I liken to this, it's the courage point. It's like Hawkins says, until a person can say no, when they're, you know, and they're always compliant, they can't get above the line of integrity, which is, again, 200 on the scale. When you have courage and that's like, fuck you, I'm not doing it, but your job, fuck my job. I'll find another one. Yeah. Not yeah. That, that, well, that, that was like, I, I understand like having to feed your family, yourself. Of course. Well, like that, that just, that plays into the fear. That's right. That, uh, the right. fear program that they invoked was. Uh, that's exactly right. But remember, it, bro, and you know, it, that it, it went really deep. It did. But here's the thing. And this is where people get lost. And this is an amazing podcast. I'm very grateful that you came on here today. But Thank like you. where people got lost is did anybody truly, bro, get a gun held up to their head and said, if you don't take this, we're going to kill you? No. Now, you heard stories in China and Australia that that was the case. But was that just more manufactured 
studio, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like uh, the, the camps, like the videos yes. of the camps. Yes. Like, I, I don't know how old those camps were. I didn't speak the language that they right. were saying. Right. It was, uh, it's like, all that, anything, it's all anything staged. out of China, I, I just, it was all, I, I assume it's uh, media. Australia, <laughs> too. Australia, too. I've got plenty of friends. I'm sure you do, too. You know, and you you talk to them and they're like, it's not nearly as bad as they're making it out to be. Yeah, yeah. Australia's yeah. fucked. But yeah, dude, I think it was all staged. I think that this is what they do. Again, from a universal law construct, they always have to tell you what they're going to do. Yeah. It's your choice to consent. And again, you know, we can end the show with this and I want, you know, I'll put up your site and you can talk to how people can connect with you. But people say to me, I didn't consent to that. I'm like, motherfucker, every time you buy a phone, you're consenting in the legalese. If they can <laughs> listen to you, that they can monitor your, you know, your frequency, your thought ways. I mean, again, you already know, dude, like you go on a website and you say a word to somebody in a fo- in a voice conversation, and then the next technology you go, they're serving you fucking ads to what your voice said. It's it's insane. Like I, I've had experiences <laughs> where I would just I was thinking something, and then like the next day I would see ads. There it for is. It, I'm like, that's that's insane. Well, bro, I don't know if they do this to you, and I've talked about this in the group. So my this is the iPhone, and I and I've only updated once in four years, but I had to because the the camera blew up screen was shattered i had to finally get one so this is the 13th yeah we didn't even get the yeah. 14th and they listen to everything i say my yeah. siri is turned off it's turned off on every part of the phone but all the time i'll look down as i'm having a conversation like with you right now or i'm doing a zoom call and i look down and they're transcribing it they're listening to it it's all the time yeah or like my, my phone will write, uh, light up randomly. Like it, it's getting like a yeah. voice command, but yes. I have all that stuff turned up. Like me too. I, I, I didn't have a phone for about four years after right. uh, like the, the brain injury and everything. Sure. I just, I couldn't comprehend any of it, but um, I ended up getting a 13 last year. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. turned off like the 5g connection, Doesn't all matter. the Siri bullshit. Doesn't matter. And no, no. <laughs> like I, I still get that, that ad issue and it's, it's really crazy. And mo- most people are just like, oh, it's just a coincidence. But no, it's no, not, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> and honestly, dude, you are marked. I'm marked. People like us, they know who we are. And, and, and yeah. I'm not saying that we're better than anybody. I'm just saying that like we are constantly outspoken and speaking against the system. And so they have marked all of us. And, you know, we can end the show. Just say this, like if and when the social credit system gets installed in the West and bro. All of us are going to be living off the grid, instantly living in communes. But the yeah. good thing is, is that we're all connected now somewhat, you know, again, through technology. And so it's not going to be hard for us to find each other. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the plus sides with technology. I've met a lot of really, really incredible people. Totally. Yeah. And when it all goes to shit, if it all goes to shit, all of us will be lined up and we'll be like, OK, we're going here. OK, we're not going there. We're going to Costa Rica. OK, we're going to Mexico. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we'll all have a plan that all of us will end up going to. And maybe it literally becomes like, you know, what was it? Journey to the center of the earth, the Ewok, Ewoks and the Morloys, you know, the <laughs> Ewoks are the, we're the ones living above the surface still like, you know, living in the spirit of God and the rest of them just become metaverse and trained, you know, transhumanist cyborgs. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I think of the, the Borg, right. From Star Trek and, you know, maybe that's what people become. The the Wally movie is a, a really, Wally really good movie, example. bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's an insane movie, dude. There have been so <laughs> many movies where they've been literally just telling us everything, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, bro. Let me put your website up um, and tell me. Hopefully, I spelled this right. If it's not, I'll change it. That's correct, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Um, so, dude, amazing. Um, it, is there anything else, you know, final words, any, any, anywhere else? I know you have a, a, a Patreon or whatever too, but um, you know, any, if somebody wants to do podcasts with you, connect with you, do work with you, is it, is this the best place for them to go? Uh, yeah, you can cut. If, if you want to contact me for any reason that uh, Jay listed, you can contact me at contact at Grimm's apothecary.net at Grimm's spelled with what, how it's spelled at the bottom of the screen. And then on Patreon, you can find me as Grim's Apothecary as well. On Twitter, you can find me as Grimhood with one M. Beautiful, man. 
We didn't talk about entheogens, but we we're at literally an hour and 15 minutes. That's how amazing this podcast is. <laughs> I mean, dude, I shut every podcast down now at 50, but ours was so good. We were so deep. Um, yeah, that, that was a good conversation. Yeah. I mean, and that's where I love conversations is talking to smart people who are, you know, energetically entwined. And, you know, we, we brought out some amazing stuff, but I think we'll do another one and we'll talk about entheogens and shadow work. Cause I, you know, we started okay. to talk about trauma, but you know, we'll bring that back. So brother, I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on. I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, keep doing all the amazing things you're doing. So for you folks out there who support all the amazing people that come on the J Campbell podcast, go to Grimm's Apocalypse apothecary.net uh you know check him out subscribe to him on patreon and remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we will see all of you guys very soon <laughs>